I want to get to what is happening in Las Vegas, where it appears that F1 uh, overestimated its market and its popularity. It has been doing nothing but exploding everywhere in the world, all over the United States. And, and you get to Vegas, and it seems like a calamity where everything is overpriced and everyone's complaining that it's not as popular as you think it is. Yeah, I, uh, people should check out Golik and Smeddy. Uh, Golik and I talked about this. He was just in Vegas for the Raiders game the other night and was talking to some people who were talking to Aaron Rodgers. It looked like yes, also Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Uh, Vegas locals not thrilled about this. There's been tons of disruptions, traffic disruptions. People that work at the businesses around where the track is don't know how they're going to be able to get to work uh, this weekend because there's going to be such a huge influx and so many influx of people and so many streets are going to be closed down. Um, there was an article in Jalopnik yesterday that Elizabeth Blackstock wrote where she interviewed people that were Vegas locals and tourists in Vegas who were – not super thrilled about everything that was going on. And then there was an article today in uh, the AP where there was a, a lot of there's a lot of questions about the financial uh, revenue that F1 will actually get from the race this weekend because they anticipated they'd be able to sell a whole bunch of expensive packages to fans. They would make tons of money off of this. F1 is itself is promoting this race and they spent. $240 million just on the place where they built this temp Ooh. this permanent paddock for like the garage for the drivers. Um, so this is a really, really expensive event. They shut down the strip. They repaved things. They built a track around like actual streets in Las Vegas. Um, but now the race is in just four days. It's Saturday. Is it selling? It's uh, ticket prices have gone down oh, substantially. Boy. Really? So, I was looking at going to this race months ago, and I looked at just the cost of getting in was in the thousands, not to mention Ooh. hotels, flights, et cetera. And I was like, ugh, if I'm going to do this for Metal Arc, I don't want to like spend they're, they're gonna pay $8,000 of Dan's money because Chris <laughs> Cody just blew through the entire budget in Germany. <laughs> and, and beer. And it's going to be expensive. <laughs> and and it, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get around. It looks like it's just going to be a, a disaster. And if I had just waited until this week, I I probably could get a deal right you should, now. The, you should the check now. Are like... You should find out now. We should try and find out what is the well, best, cheapest. Weekend, oh, so it's that's not too bad. Uh, I like to plan. Chris will out. go. I mean, unlike I'll go. unlike Metal Arc Dan, I have my schedule uh, done months in advance. So this weekend it was, would have been something I had planned in September. Uh, that was a burn at Metal Arc. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not the one who makes our schedule. Say, huh? I'm not the one who makes our schedule. There's like also, I don't. I, don't, I will take it up with whoever. The schedule I love the idea of you making the schedule. Me, me, me getting in the weekend, like, where can I send Jessica that she won't like? No, okay. Now I feel bad because now I feel like I actually am throwing someone under, under the bus that I like. Way to go, Dan. So, anyways, <laughs> if you have been thrown under bus, call Alex Hanna. So, anyways, there's a lot of uh, anxiety about how this race is going to go. And also, it's at like 1 a.m. Eastern time Saturday. So they were, they made it really late because they want people in Europe to be able to watch it early in the morning. But at the expense of American, most Americans who live on the East Coast or in the East time zone who are going to probably be asleep. And add on top of that the fact that the weather in Las Vegas is very cold at night. It will be very cold when the race begins. And when you have colder temperatures – the tires may not be able to heat up as quickly. The equipment may not work as well. It may take more laps for the tires to warm up on, in qualifying to you know, have a flying lap where you're in full go mode trying to go as fast as you can, and you have the you know, friction with the tires and the track that allow you to drive faster. So it's interesting. Uh, I imagine that if you're watching it on TV, which I will be asleep, um, that you will not be able to notice any of these things. I, I hope. I hope it's a good event for spectators. But if you're there, it, it may be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Well, it sounds. It sounds like a lot of this is uh, the cosmos during an apocalyptic time laughing at uh, us that this expensive sport that is wildly popular all over the world and wants to be desperately popular in the United States as it is all over the world, that it and all its expense would flog that city, would flog Las Vegas, uh, a place of money and, and, you know, and style and ostensibly the hot thing Vegas is getting into the game in sports. Vegas has never been bigger in sports than it is right now. For them to take that giant expensive event 
that costs a quarter of a billion dollars just to erect what their party looks like and to have it not land correctly the way it has landed well all over the country. Even Austin and Miami have had their problems, but nothing's been this. It's never landed somewhere unpopularly, has it? Austin is is a race that I think most Formula One fans love. Miami, I think, is a little comparable to this in that they're – trying to get a certain clientele to go to these races and that clientele has a lot of uh, disposable income and that is not really like it as it's kind of borne out by this ticket fiasco if you want to call it that like maybe there's not that big of a market for a race in November in Las Vegas maybe there aren't that many people who want to spend thousands of dollars to go to this race especially when it's late in the season it's the second to last race of the season Max Verstappen won the driver's championship months ago there's no there's no race for the number one spot anymore there's no stakes is what you're saying he's probably gonna win this race too he's winning every freaking race um but I think I think genuinely like the price is just too expensive like you're marketing this for people that maybe don't even exist like this is uh, the cost to get in is too high well, I was going to ask you, because Verstappen... <laughs> Your microphone wasn't on is. because you haven't talked. Tickets are 80 bucks, by the way, right now. Why, why not just keep them. the microphone on? I don't know how that works. I don't think we trust you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway. Um, what I was going to ask is, because Verstappen clinched the season championship so long ago, isn't that a problem for a, a race like Vegas? Isn't that a problem for F1 in general? Because that's one thing that NASCAR does right, is they have actually have a season-ending championship race. Whereas in, in F1, every race after he clinched becomes all but meaningless, doesn't it? Uh, not necessarily, because I think fans still want to see how the rest of the standings kind of play out. But I do think if maybe if you're a casual fan, you're not going to tune in. Formula One is still rating really well on ESPN. People are still tuning in to watch it when it's on on Sundays. Uh, I think it's still one of ESPN's highest rated live sporting events on the days that it's been on because they you know don't have football this time of year. So it's been doing really well. Um, maybe there's been some of a drop off. It's hard to tell, but I don't. I don't know. It, de- it depends, really. I think people that really actually like the sport for the sport are still going to watch the race. It's just now you have a race that's on the same time as the Grand Prix that's in uh, Japan. Like, it's it's really hard for fans on the East Coast to stay up and watch it. If you're marketing this towards American fans, you missed out on an opportunity there. 